kudos to you all for singing the lyrics which are a little bit out of sync. That's pretty good. You made it fit. That's pretty cool. I <laughs> did a good job. I like that. But uh, well, welcome again. Isn't it nice to be here together? Good morning, Central Lutheran Church. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Pastor John. Nice you, you know, as I was thinking about Thanksgiving, and I was trying to determine if I should do a Thanksgiving sermon before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving, I thought it was more appropriate for us to do it before Thanksgiving. So let's start our word or our day with a word of prayer, and then we'll, we'll think about all the blessings that we're so lucky to have received from our Heavenly Father. Let's, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to worship with you today here in our church, and that our country still allows us to worship freely. This is truly a blessing from you, Father. Be with us all as we hear the message of your holy word and your living truth. And I ask that the Holy Spirit work within each person who hears my voice to accept the glories offered only through your Son, Jesus. In his holy and precious name I ask these things. Amen. Well, you know, it's really hard to imagine that another year, we're coming up on Christmas again, and we will have a nice warm sanctuary, which will be nice. But it's hard to believe that another year is cycling around, right? And we have another Thanksgiving day that's almost here, just a few days away. And since this is still a day that is nationally recognized to give thanks, I think it's really important for us to ensure we, we preserve the correct context, or rather the Christian context, of what Thanksgiving is. And in my studying this week for this message, I came across an interesting depiction, description, if you will. And it's from the Roman philosopher Seneca, who once made this statement. Let a man who would be grateful think of repaying a kindness while he is receiving it. I believe this one statement alone sums it up quite effectively. What should be at the heart of our thoughts as we approach Thanksgiving Day? We should not be content with just think, thanking God for his multiple blessings, but be very much concerned with repaying God for his blessings. And in fact, the very essence of Thanksgiving lies not in receiving, but in giving. So what can I give back to God for what he has given me? That's what we should be thinking. But unfortunately, this spirit or this attitude is, has not yet penetrated into the majority of American homes. And sometimes when we think about the current direction of our society, maybe it never will. Now, it's not that we don't enjoy Thanksgiving, but that many have limited its real significance. And it's truly sad that many today have almost eliminated the basic meaning of thanksgiving. Now sure, America is thankful. At least most people seem to be, and it would be inaccurate to say that there is not a spirit of thankfulness still alive in many parts of America today. I mean, America is still thankful for its homes, we have places to live, our heritage, and it's continued freedom, which is eroding. But we all must be grateful for it. And we all must be very protective of it. And the majority of families who sit down to festive and food-filled table in just a few days, I believe are thankful for what they have. And we must remember how blessed our nation has been and how much we have enjoyed these overflowing blessings. We have a lot to be thankful for. But thankfulness involves more than a small acknowledgement to God. 
The genuine thanksgiving spirit does not stop, much less begin with the mere acknowledgement of thanks for services rendered. And that's the main reason why today and on the day of Thanksgiving, it becomes only an empty chant for so many people. They don't really pay attention to what they're saying. You see, many will say things, but then they'll go right back into living unchanged lives. And it really should make us wonder if Thanksgiving Day, our official observance day in the United States, should really be called Thanksgiving Day at all. Well, from a Christian perspective, probably not. <coughs> you see, the true spirit of thanksgiving and of thankfulness to God enters our lives only when we make a definite decision to give back to God a good life for all that He has done for us. To give back to God a good life all that he has done for us. Today's reading is found in Psalms 147, beginning at verse 7 through verse 12, where the reading follows in the name of our Lord. Would you please rise and be able to, to stand up respect for the word. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain on the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens the cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is the only living truth. Please be seated. When we look at Thanksgiving Day, we should really say, I mean, maybe it's more appropriate to say living thanks instead of giving thanks. You see, my friends, unless I give my whole life to God, my giving of thanks on any day, let alone Thanksgiving Day, doesn't mean very much. But not only a thank you that comes from our lives, but more importantly, a thank you that stems from our hearts, what's inside of us. This is the real spirit behind this day. So what then are some of the blessings or gifts from God for which we owe him our very lives. Well, first of all, we owe thanks to God for what he is. Or as we should probably so emphatically say, thank God for God. Praise the Lord. You see, there is no more important fact for our welfare than that God is by nature good. Wouldn't it be pretty scary to even think or imagine what this world would be like if God were a God of evil? I mean, true, there is sin and evil within our world. And true, Satan is the God of evil here on planet Earth. But the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, the God who created our world and who created us, this, our God, is kind and loving and good. And we see from his revealed word the goodness of of God is emphasized over and over again. In James 1.17 it reads, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. You see, without God, without the God of creation and his care for his creation, us and everything else, nothing on this earth would even work. It's all dependent on God. And Psalms 147, 8 and 9 reads, He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. 
My friends, every single act of God centers in mercy, in love, in sympathy and grace. He loves us. In Nahum 1, verse 7, it reads, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in Him. He knows His children. If you have a loving relationship with your Heavenly Father, He knows you, He loves you, He cares for you. He only wants what's best for you. And Psalm 145, 9 reads, The Lord is good to all. And his mercy is over all that he has made. God's loving mercy flows from his loving heart. Not anything we have done to deserve it. It's all from God. Ephesians 2.4 But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, and as you can see within this verse, it is not within the nature of God to be wicked, but loving. Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Just as the mountain snow causes the spring waters to overflow the riverbanks, so the goodness of God pours out deeds of mercy and loving kindness for us. All of creation, and as we see in the nature and its surroundings, these literally spell out the words God's goodness and God's love. Psalm 24, 1 and 2 reads, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. The sunshine, the rain, the wheat fields, the apple orchards, these great things would not be and could not be if our Creator was not good, if our Creator was not loving. The trees, the flowers, the hills, the valleys, these things this beauty shouts out God's great goodness. God is the omnipotent creator, the preserver and the provider of every single thing in this world. And our God, he is a loving father. He loves you and me more than we will ever be able to understand. And he cares deeply for each and every person on this earth. That should blow your mind. And this we should be so thankful for. I mean, has it ever occurred to you? Have you ever even thought about it? What the Creator God could have made of this world if you were a God who loved wickedness rather than good? He could have created a world with no water, no heat, no light. And if he had, what could we do about it? He could have made us to live in a bleak, barren, treeless, grassless, fruitless world. If he was that kind of a God, what could we have done? But he is not that kind of a God. He loves us. He cares for us. And he formed us in the womb to praise him. And he knew you when he created the world. Thank God and praise the Lord for life itself. My friends, it is a privilege to be born. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14 reads, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful for life 
And it's unfortunate that it's not treated as such as that verse in Psalm 139, 13, 14 just says. That verse is one of the biggest examples of life is sacred at all stages in the womb. We should appreciate life. We should protect life. We should protect the unborn. We ought to be thankful for the privilege of being able to see the beauty of God's creation in the way that he made it. We have, we have a sense of smell, we have eyes, and a sight to admire the beauty of the sun. We have the stars, we have the trees, we have the flowers, we have the rains, we have the clouds, we have the sea, and we have the dry land. All of the beauty of creation that God gave to us we must be thankful for. Psalm 19.1 reads, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. One of the biggest lessons that all of us need to learn is to never take God for granted. We must never take these wonderful things of nature that He has given to us for granted. But that's what many of us might have done and might still be doing, right? I mean, now admit it. At times, don't all of us complain or worry about how the, how the weather is? Sometimes it's too hot. Sometimes it's too cold. Sometimes it's, well, all the time it's too wet in Washington, right? See what I mean? At times, don't all of us more or less take it out on God? We take it out on God for sickness and sorrows and mental strife and suffering. And if things don't go just right, we are sometimes guilty of saying, why does God let this happen to me? God gets the blame for many things because we have too often taken his goodness and his blessings for granted. And we should never complain against our good God. So if we're guilty of being ungrateful or complaining to God, make a commitment right now to act differently. Never take God as a grain of salt, but always be eternally grateful for what He has done and how His goodness reveals itself to us. Even in our trials or our sufferings or our burdens of life, we must, we must be thankful because God has given to us the strength to meet our difficulties. And as Christians, we know that, don't we? When we have problems, we cling to Christ. And He helps us get through those problems. He helps us to endure because He loves us. And he will continue to give us strength if we only ask him. And all of this we can be assured of because God is good and he loves us. 1 Timothy 4 verses 4 and 5 reads, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. But it's really too bad sometimes that humans need to see darkness to appreciate the light. And we need, to, we need to experience the winter freeze to appreciate the summer's heat. But we must always remember to thank God in prayer for what He has done and what He gives to us. And then spend time in His Word to grow in Him. And I say that a lot, I know. But we must spend time in God's Word if we ever expect to know Him. <coughs> we need to praise the Lord and thank God for God on Thanksgiving Day because we are still a free people in America with freedom of worship and freedom of speech. 
But again, we must be careful. Because the danger confronts us of taking our freedom for granted. Let us remember that freedom is not an automatic way of life. But rather, it is a priceless, precious possession. Which few people in the nations of this world still enjoy. Freedom is a rare privilege. We must never forget that. And we must thank God for it. And we must pray to God that he will keep us worthy enough to keep that freedom. And especially nowadays in the America in which we are living. When you look at history, it is one disgraceful record book of the bondages, the frustrations, and the oppressions of nations. Yet we in America, we're still free. And if we look around the world today, how many nations are really free? What we see is tyrannical rule. Many people in our world, within other countries, are in bondage to evil dictatorships and evil rulers. And it's sad. But we must be careful, too. Watch out, America. Pay attention, America. Be active to protect America. Hold dear to the freedoms that we currently possess. And be informed. And stand up to defend our country and to defeat leaders, current leaders that are in our country now who infringe on our freedoms. Christians are being persecuted now in America. We need to wake up and take the appropriate actions in a loving and kind way to make sure we're informed on who we're putting into office to protect our freedoms. And another reason why today we should be so thankful as a nation is America is not really suffering in general with what the rest of the world suffers with. God is still protecting us. God is still blessing us. And our society needs to stop and think the next time they are tempted to complain about America and its faults. We need to realize how wonderful we really have it and be thankful to God for his care and his blessings. Now true, there are many things that we don't like in America. We are not a perfect people, far from it. Sin is growing more and more widespread in our country. Laws are being changed <coughs> which benefit sinful behavior. But we should not complain or grumble, but rather we should stand up for what is right according to God's word and pray for our country and its sins. As Christians, we should work for the betterment of our society. As Christians, we should be determined to be a better Christian and be a better citizen and be active in paying close attention to ensure God's laws are upheld in the country in which we live. And our freedom as Christians are not taken away from us. So stay alert if you treasure the freedom in this country and stand up to protect it. As Christians, we must obey God and seek His pleasure and fear Him and His wrath if we ever hope to have eternal life with Him. Psalms 147, 10 and 11 reads, His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. But in your prayers and in your activities, be grateful for our heritage of freedom. Do not take it for granted. 
but work to preserve it. We owe thanks to God for the prosperity of our lives and our homes. Praise the Lord. Starvation is a word that is still foreign to the experiences of every one of us here. And in America today, we really don't know what it means to be continually in hunger and in want. And then today after the service, when we celebrate a little bit with our lean, we're going to have snacks, and we're going to have warm drinks. <coughs> and on Thanksgiving Day, millions of people will sit down to enjoy just truly big portions of food. And in America, we have homes, and we have places to live, and we have farms, and we have crops, which would be and are the envy of most of the other people in the other nations in our world today. But do these facts cause thanks, thanksgiving to us? Do they cause us to be thankful to God? Or do we just take these things for granted? Most of us here today have never had to be objects of charity and on the receiving end. But do we thank God for what we have? Really? And if you are blessed, like most of us here today are blessed, thank God for God and praise the Lord that we can be on the receiving and on the giving end. Amen. Philippians 2.4 reads, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Thank God and praise the Lord that we can help others in need. Galatians 6, 9 and 10 reads, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. That means we take care of those who can't care for themselves. Especially for Christians. My friends, and most importantly, we owe thanks to God and praise to the Lord for His Son, Jesus Christ. All of us can be on the road that leads to the heavenly mansions above simply by confessing and believing in Jesus Christ to save us. Romans 10, 9 and 10 reads, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Can any thought be more wonderful than this? Can any thought be more powerful and glorious than the thought that I can live forever with God in His kingdom and experience the wondrous love for all of eternity, forever? You know, the Bible compares eternity to the blink of an eye, one blink. Life is like a blink of an eye on this planet, your whole life. Eternity is a long time. It's forever. We can't really comprehend that, I don't think. But we get to spend eternity with Christ if we have him in our, if we have him in our hearts, in our lives. And we must thank God for God and praise the Lord for that. And don't let any day go by without a personal, intimate prayer to thank God for Jesus and His love. Don't let Thanksgiving Day happen without a personal, intimate prayer to thank God for Jesus and His love. Think of that for a moment. Those who love Christ and have a personal, intimate, life-changing relationship with Him have access and right to the, to the divine kingdom of God. We have right to the divine kingdom of God. Amen. That should blow your mind. Yeah. And those who truly love Christ will never be outcasts. We will never be unwanted, and we will never be unknown. 
And those who truly love Jesus Christ will be held in his loving arms as his children, as his sons and daughters, as heirs to the throne of God above. And it's truly sad that some have not yet accepted the good news of salvation offered only through a right relationship with Christ. And some never will. But we have. Because we have, shouldn't we be eternally thankful for this free gift that God gives to those who love Him? Praise God for God and praise the Lord. Of course we should. My friends, no one can enter the kingdom of God without first knowing Jesus Christ. But we know all about Him, don't we? And because we know about Him and what He offers to those who truly believe in Him and live according to His plan for your life, we can be saved. So go spread the gospel of Christ and be thankful that we still have freedom to do so. Don't waste your time on sending out stupid emails Spend time sharing the gospel of Christ, maybe even in the same method. That's what we should do. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. My friends, all of America and most of the world has already been offered the gospel of Christ. So if some are not saved, it is because they have rejected Jesus and what he has prepared for them. And the Bible tells us that only the fool rejects Christ. All others will escape to him with hearts of gratitude for his all saving, loving grace. We must do what we can to save our lost world and bring the word of salvation to everyone we know. Every friend, every neighbor, every person you come across, you should be sharing the gospel of Christ with. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians. Bring others into Christ. So thank God for God and praise the Lord. That is the inspiring lesson of today. That shouldn't be hard to do, should it? The thankful heart is not dependent on circumstances. It is dependent on Christ. To know and to do God's will should be the joy of Christian life. To know and to do God's will, this is cause for rejoicing. Every day in the lives of Christians should be Thanksgiving Day. For thanksgiving is nothing more than the national response of the grateful heart to God for what he has done for all of us. Each and every one of us have so much to be thankful for. So it should not be hard to give thanks today or any other day. Let us be committed to obey and follow Christ and live according to his plan for our lives. Let us be committed to share his holy word with those who do not yet know him. My friends, to be truly thankful is to know Christ personally. And with our thankfulness, let us be determined to live closer to our God. For it is in living the way God intended that we give our greatest thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. 
Thank God for God. Praise the Lord for what he does for us. And always give praise to your Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are such a loving God. We are so lucky to have you as our Father and our Savior. You offer us everything if we just accept you. We know your word says that we can't even imagine how wonderful it will be in heaven to be with you. We can't even imagine it. And it's so sad that some people just don't accept you into their lives. Father, I ask that you let the Holy Spirit work through everyone here today and everyone who hears my voice, that they too can have a right relationship with you and spend eternity in your glorious kingdom. Thank you, God, for being God. Thank you, God, for letting us praise you and give glory to you for all that you have done for us. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.